It's better than sitting here staring at each other. <laughs> I think it'd be beneficial as well to hear kind of what I, I completely what's going agree. On. Uh, we are recording, so I'm going to go ahead and get this meeting started. Welcome to the pre meeting for the Planning Commission. Tonight is December 1st, 2020. Um, first item on our agenda tonight is the, the the minutes from our previous meeting. Any comments or questions about that? Matt? Yeah. Oh, I've got to read my my little statement, huh? Yeah, and I just heard from, from Ammon. He's planning to join soon. Okay, perfect. Uh, <clears throat> I've done it enough times. You'd think I'd remembered by now. All right, due to the increased threat of serious illness and loss of life by the rapid spread of the COVID-19 virus, the chair of the West Jordan Planning Commission has determined that conducting this Planning Commission meeting at the City Hall or at another anchor location is likely to contribute to the spread of COVID-19 and would present a substantial risk to the health, safety, and welfare of the city's residents, participants, and observers. Therefore, pursuant to Utah Code 52-4-2074, the West Jordan Planning Commission hereby declares that the meetings of this public body will be held only electronically until further notice. This determination will expire in 30 days from the date the chair of the Planning Commission signs the written determination. Okay, now that I got that out of the way, we can get back to where I was trying to get to uh, before I got ahead of myself. Any comments, questions about the, the minutes from the previous meeting? Okay. And I just wanted to acknowledge that we do have all seven members of the commission present tonight. Uh, the next business item we have is item number two, premier diagnostics. Um, we'll get a quick rundown from Mr. Forsyth up, uh, you know, upstairs. Uh, it seems like it's pretty straightforward. Did you, did you have any questions on this one? Just the parking. Uh, I think that's a question we probably ought to handle upstairs. <laughs> uh, any other comments or questions? Uh, then in our public hearings, we've got items four and five being um, continued until our next meeting. So we'll just gloss over those for now. Uh, when we get upstairs, we will need a, a motion to continue both of those. Duncan, I assume we can handle both of those in the same motion? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that brings us to our, our first and final public hearing for the night, which is Banfield Pet Hospital. Um, looks like we've got a double dose of Mark, Mark tonight. Do you want to give us a little bit on this one, Mark, and then we can ask any questions? Sure. Yeah, so this is uh, a pet hospital that's going to be uh, going into the old Key Bay building. Just, uh, hey, Mark, can you get a little bit closer to your mic? We can barely hear you. Is that better? Not much. Does that help? Uh, There's a lot of feedback I'm getting. Uh, we've, yeah, we've got a lot of buzzing in the background. Matt, let me go give you my headset. Um, so you won't be able to hear from me tonight, but I'll give you my headset. So. Okay. Yeah, we've noticed. Make sure you that spray it off first, Larry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you've noticed uh, we're, we're grateful for the new hardware, the new uh, laptops that, that the staff has, but the new laptops, the, the fans, it's like you're running up and having to in the background if you don't have the headset. Oh. <clears throat> well, while we're waiting, I did get a, I was at the, uh, the city hall earlier today and got a quick tour from Alan of uh, the renovations in the, in the council chambers. That's going to be pretty nice when we can get back in there. We won't have to deal with all this feedback anymore. Do we have an idea when that'll happen? It's supposed to be only two weeks. We're probably at about three or four now. And it wasn't, uh, it didn't look close. Probably another week at least. But until COVID slows down, we're not gonna go back anyway, so. Matt, you said you won't get feedback while you're there. I think the residents might still can't even hear you guys. I'm sorry, say that again, Mayor. I said, I think you still might get feedback even when you're in the council chamber. <laughs> well, we aren't the city council. We don't get much feedback. Yeah, you don't get near as much. That's true. <laughs> All right, Mark, I heard you talking. Let's see if it works. It says you're talking, but we can't hear anything.
trying to be. I can't hear you guys. It's very suspenseful, though. <laughs> we are all sitting on pins and needles. Sounds yeah. like he can't hear us now. Yeah. yeah. Fine on the Bluetooth, but. It's good to have this extra time. Well, just when you figure out technology, then they upgrade or change something on you, and you have to figure it out all over again. You got to come back up to Larry's computer and you go back in and use it in Larry's office. Yeah, Zoom heard us complaining about needing to stare at each other for 20 minutes, so it's just doing its job to make sure we don't have to do it all at once. No, I can't get a thing. Yeah, I did. It's it's not working. Well, hold on. I can hear you say, "Yeah, I did," but it's not working. It was faint, but I heard that. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Okay. There he is. Okay. Finally. <laughs> All right. So. I'm glad we got uh, the brook out now. So why do we meet before, I guess? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway, the Premier Diagnostics, they're a, a drive through COVID-19 testing center that's just going to be going in into that parking lot just to the east of the Taco Bell on uh, 900 South and Redwood Road. So kind of in that uh, River Point uh, Plaza shopping center. So they, they've got kind of a, a U-shaped drive-through configuration going through there and they'll have their um, people on the end there to um, administer tests. They'll have about uh, 48 employees and that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, what about the Pet Hospital? Yes, in the Banfield Hospital, that's uh, going to be going in the the old Key Bank building, just off of Seventy Hundred South and and Redwood Road. There, just just north of the Smiths. So, um, so they're basically going to be uh, renovating the whole interior of that, uh, just adding rooms and uh, labs and things like that. Um, uh, the exterior of the building's going to remain exactly the same. They're not, uh, they're not changing anything on that. So um, parking's all shared. Um, hours are going to be 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and they'll have uh, about 48 employees there. So. You said 40 employees? Oh, four to eight. Sorry. Oh, okay. i sorry, I misheard you. I thought 40 was an awful lot of vets for one <laughs> office. Okay. Any questions on either one of these items, guys? Just okay, I assume that, that helps with your questions about parking. I just want to know about the flow of traffic because dealing with our COVID testing, you get a lot of cars, a lot of cars. Yeah, my sister-in-law was waiting in line for one for almost three hours last week. I don't anticipate that that would be an issue with this one though, because it's a paid, I'm assuming that it's a paid one. Uh, so um, those ones with really long lines are free. And that may, may make a big difference too. I would think it would. Well, I, I thought I thought the way it worked was that if you had if you were symptomizing, they were all free. That you only pay for it if you just want to get a test. Like, hey, I got to go home for the holidays, so I want to get tested. Some of them you can go through your insurance, and they'll cover it through the insurance. But like the ones you have to get before you fly or anything, that's out of your own pocket. Your insurance usually won't cover that. Yeah, I've been finding that out. I'm in quarantine right now. <laughs> or you can quarantine for a 14 days. Is uh, 
maybe that's a question we could ask the applicant. Yeah, I mean, I'm very familiar with what the COVID testing and stuff, because that's kind of what I do at work, but that's just a couple of the concerns when I was going through the packet I had. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, that'd be a good question to ask. It's pretty uh, frustrating trying to find a place to get testing. Mark, do we know if the applicant's going to be here? I mean, I know we still have 15 minutes before the public meeting starts, but right now we don't have anybody sitting in the waiting room. Um, are, are we going to have applicants for both these 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 uh, items tonight? Yeah, I've I've let the applicant for uh, Premier know that uh, that they would need to be at this meeting, and then the the applicant for Banfield Pet Hospital. Uh, I just talked to him a few minutes ago. Well about uh, almost an hour ago. And yeah, he will be at the meeting to give a pretty okay. small presentation. As long as we can ask them some of these questions then we can we can forbear the questions for now since we can't get answers. Anything else? I've got one question, Mark. Um, the storage shed that's mentioned for the diagnostic testing, is that just the same one that's on site now? Just the plastic shed? Yeah, yeah, they're just okay. having the one there. Yep. Perfect. I didn't know if they were going to move to a more permanent structure once this is approved or not. So that's all I got. Thanks. I have a question for Mark. Um, what, it's in relationship to the stat, the parking. What is the stacking as far as, I mean, I can see on the picture where the cars come in right off of 90th. How many cars can they stack in that line before they make the, the circle to get tested? Uh, we looked at that. They so they're required to have a minimum of six uh, stacking spaces since they only have the one drive-through lane. Um, but from what I remember, I believe it was around seven or eight, uh, maybe ten, at the most. Yeah, that that feels like it's going to be pretty tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one thing I should point out too, and I'll, I'll mention this in the meeting, but uh, they uh, initially when we originally got the application, I had asked them to move that uh, a little bit further over Redwood Road or, or away from, from 900 South just to see if we could increase the stacking. But apparently the property owner is having some real uh, heartburn about uh, allowing anything in the center of his parking lot. So in order to get his blessing, they had to, to move it to the north side. So Seems like you'd be willing to have just about anything show up there to, to bring business for right now. Places like ghost town <laughs> until we get our, until we get our uh, drink mixing place up and running. Right. <laughs> and we, right. Then you can get your Chalupa and then go get a, go get a mixed drink. And get a COVID test all at the same time. All right, um, enough snarkiness on my part. Anything else, guys? Okay, Scott, you want to give us uh, some insights on on what 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 the haps are? Sure. Um, so, first of all, I'm really uh, proud of of uh, city staff and all the work they put in so far um, for not just Wood Ranch, but things related to Wood Ranch. Uh, the, the PCFB ordinance is coming along. Uh, we've got the uh, gravel extraction overlay zone that, that, that we're working on. And, uh, you know, Duncan and Larry and Ray, they, they've put in countless hours, um, worked, worked over holiday weekends, et cetera, to keep things moving along. Right now, in fact, let me share this. So this is a, a slide, if you can see. Oh, this is a slide that I shared with the city council a few weeks ago or a week ago, just to, to explain where we are. Um, there are a lot of different steps. And the reason why I showed, are you seeing this? Yeah. Is, the reason why I, uh, I prepared this slide for the council is just to explain that there are just so many different elements to this project and uh, it, it's one of the most complicated things that I've worked on in my career. And, um, you know, I tried to create a visual for the council to, to show, showcase all of these steps from the annexation to uh, dealing with a, a separate uh, improvement district with, with Kearns, um, 
you know, the, the, I talked about the PCFB, the mining extraction, we've got uh, the financing aspect with the public infrastructure district, and of course the, the, the MDA. But uh, if you saw, if you saw the council meeting, I, I quickly scrapped this, this visual because it, it was a sequential um, process that, that, that I was trying to illustrate. But in actuality, that's not the case. What, what we have is more like an arch that we're trying to build here, where you have all these elements building on each other and, and tying it all together would be this MDA. And so there's just so many pieces moving right now. Now, the first thing that the commission will see is this PCFB ordinance. And right now it's in, in Daybreak's hands. They're reviewing it right now. Um, along with uh, a draft of the uh, mining overlay. And so we feel that that will really uh, set the foundation for this, this arch, if you will, moving up. And um, we're con concurrently working on all of these things. There's, there's geotech uh, study that should be started, I think this week, uh, actual on the, actually on the site. Um, the, the PID discussion continues to go forward, annexation, et cetera. Uh, tomorrow night, the council will be reviewing the uh, revised interlocal agreement with Kearns Improvement District, which is step one of, of dealing with that, uh, that component. So we're moving. Uh, we hope that Daybreak will provide us feedback uh, in an uh, efficient manner so that we can indeed hit the December 15th planning commission meeting. And so that's kind of kind of where we sit right now. Um, do you have any questions? So I thought it was pretty helpful. I mean, I, I know everybody here is probably at some point driven through daybreak, but it was helpful to kind of get their tour. And I would imagine there's at least three members of this commission who haven't had that tour. I'm wondering if that's something they'd be willing to do. And, and I'm sure that that would also apply to um, like with two of the city council members as well who were, who were new this year. Well, I guess Calvin's not new. He would have done it already. But, you know, Melissa as well, to kind of get people an idea to see what their vision is uh, for what we're doing with this. So that, we're, the, that those aren't, they're not flying so blind. For me, it was helpful to see what they were thinking. And I don't know if that's something that would be helpful that they'd be willing to do again as um, we're kind of getting a, hopeful final final look at this PCFB soon. I would appreciate it. Anybody else? So Pamela. I think it'd be nice. I haven't I haven't uh, done it either. Pamela I would be interested as well. I ha I didn't make it out there, but if I recall the last time they did it, it was midday, which is difficult for me, but um yeah i think it would be helpful just to get eyes on it it was definitely it, it, valuable yeah it's it's just neat because you drive through there and you can kind of form your own uneducated opinion of what daybreak is but when you hear the 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 thought process behind it and how they came up with it the whole thing kind of just comes together and makes more sense and it really helps shed light on what this pcfb does um it's a really nice concept but if you don't see it in in practice it's hard to really kind of uh, get it to coalesce into one. So it was good for me to see that. I can reach out to them and see what their avail availability would be. Um, if you can, if just to help with the logistics, if you would like a tour, if you could send Julie an email uh, indicating your, if you can go out and, and a couple time slots, Corbin, you mentioned during the days, not gonna work for you. So uh, things like that's helpful. Gotcha. Yeah. I, when I mean middle of the day, like if I recall, it was a midday lunchtime thing. So, you know, if it was four or five in the afternoon and I'll email Julie with that information. So, yeah, that would be helpful. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Any, uh, uh, how close are we on that annexation? Are we still waiting on that? So Duncan, Duncan probably shed more light on that particular issue. Yeah, the annexation petition has been drafted and we've reviewed it and it looks good. The issue with the annexation though is that once it's filed, the city has to act upon it quickly. And uh, 
and it has to be adopted at the same time as the zone change. Part of what, when you go through an annexation process, zoning typically is assigned to the property at the same time it's annexed into the city. And currently the issue is we have not yet adopted the PCFB zone text amendment or ordinance. And so there's, there's no way to give them. Uh, and of course, the, we, we can't really give them the, P, the uh, PCFB zone to that annexed property until they have a master development agreement in place. So it's kind of a timing issue, a chicken and egg issue, if you will. We need to get these text amendments done first. Um, then when we have an MDA pretty much in place, then we can start the annexation process because we really need to complete the annexation, the MDA and the, and the zoning applied to the property all concurrently at the same time. Okay, so we just basically you know that we are, this is, this is a done deal and then we can slap this last thing in place. Right, the document is drafted, they're ready to go. That's just in holding pattern, waiting until uh, everything else is ready to go with it. Okay, perfect. Any other questions, guys? We have about three minutes. And perhaps at the next meeting, uh, if it would be helpful, uh, we can come up with a, a, a flow chart that shows the sequencing of how everything has to lock into place. Because Duncan brings yeah. up a great point that, uh, for example, we're not going to grant zoning on the property, even, even if the PCFB text gets approved, we're not gonna grant, we can't grant the zoning on the land itself until an MDA is in place. So there, there's some real uh, art to the sequencing here. And uh, I think a flow chart would, would be helpful. Uh, you got about 90 seconds everyone to go get a refill or a refresher on your drink. Hopefully it's a short meeting when you don't need to refill. Yeah. Hey, Mark, I still don't see uh, our applicant for, um, for Premier. Um, do you want to just send off a quick message to uh, confirm that he's going to be here so we can push through when he gets here? Because a lot of those questions we had are going to be uh, in, his, in his corner. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'll send him a quick email. Okay, thank you. I was just reading in the letter that he wrote at the very end of the staff report and it mentions uh, uh, the numbers that we were questioning and asking about. If you go, I, missed, I was reading through that. It's the very last page, exhibit D. And he, yeah, that's kind of what brought my uh, attention to some of the concerns I had. He, he suggests there will be one to 200 community members each day through the drive through but that there shouldn't be any stacking or very little, very little stacking is what he's suggesting. Well, but during those hours, that still exceeds 10 to 20 cars an hour coming through. Mm -hmm. And with a stacking rate of only seven, you know, it could get, it could, could get a little bit close there. Are the PCR tests are those the the rapid tests or is that the one where they stick the swab in your in your in your brain to get the test? I'm not sure. Your sign says it's a saliva test. If that's kind of what they've gone to right now is the saliva test instead of the I uh, call it the brain swab. Yeah, if, and, it's the, uh, if it's the rapid test, it won't. Then the stacking won't be an issue. I mean, I think those numbers that they're sharing there should bear out easily. So. Yeah, their website shows only saliva and then an antibody test. The it's PCR like, is saliva. I had it done on Sunday. Did you get your results back right away? I got my results back uh, 3 a.m. It posted to my account. Uh, so 3 a.m. Monday morning. 
because my parents had to go get it done and it took them about three days to get theirs. Oh, wow. I have another one on Thursday. I was exposed quite a bit, so I have to get another test on Thursday. Lucky you. Yeah, you're so lucky. Um, all right, I've got 601. Uh, hopefully the applicant will show up so we can address these questions. In the meantime, we're going to get started. Uh, welcome to the Planning Commission meeting tonight for December 1st, 2020. We have all seven members of the Planning Commission present. Uh, bear with me really quickly while I read this notice. <clears throat> Due to the increased threat of serious illness and loss of life by the rapid spread of the COVID-19 virus, the chair of the West Jordan Planning Commission has determined that conducting this Planning Commission meeting at the City Hall or at another anchor location is likely to contribute to the spread of COVID-19 and would present a substantial risk to the health, safety, and welfare of the city's residents, participants, and observers. Therefore, pursuant to Utah Code 52-4-2074, the West Jordan Planning Commission hereby declares that the meetings of this public body will be held only electronically until further notice. This determination will expire in 30 days from the date the chair of the Planning Commission signs the written determination. And with that, we will go ahead and move forward into our agenda. The first item up on our agenda tonight is a review of the minutes from our previous meeting of November 17th. Any questions, comments, or motions? I thought they were good and I would make a motion to approve those minutes. Uh, we'll take a motion from Commissioner Thomas and assume that that is a good second from Com Commissioner England. You got it. Yes. A motion by Commissioner Thomas, seconded by Commissioner England. Any discussion to the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, uh, moving on to the next item of our business uh, items is Premier Diagnostics, uh, 1627 West, 90th South. Temporary use permit for 150 days in a PC zone. Our applicant is Justin Hull. Uh, Mr. Forsyth, do we have him on the, the, the line yet? I sent him an email, but uh, I haven't heard back from him. Okay, well, why don't we uh, let you tell us what we need to know. Um, we'll see if we can hammer out the details and if he shows up, then we'll give him a few minutes. Okay, uh, thank you, Chairman. So uh, the applicant's requesting approval of a 150-day temporary use permit to operate a drive-through COVID-19 testing center. And this will be located uh, over in the River Point Plaza Shopping Center at 9000 South and Redwood Road. So more specifically, you can kind of see here on the map, this will just uh, be in the parking lot just to the east of the Taco Bell that's, that's right there. Oops. So this is, uh, this is a copy of their site plan that they've submitted, um, just kind of showing the overall layout. So they'll have a U-shaped drive where people will enter from 9000 South, come in here, and then just wrap around. Um, and so their uh, testing physicians, they'll be stationed here at the, the east end of that, uh, that drive-through uh, to allow for uh, the maximum amount of, of stacking spaces. And so, um, so they'll plan on having about four to eight employees there um, to hit multiple cars to try and uh, keep the, some of that traffic down and um, make that work. So uh, initially, uh, we did request that they they move that kind of more towards the center of the parking lot further to the south uh, to see if we could get a little bit more uh, room for stacking and traffic. But uh, uh, apparently the the property owner has refused to, to allow that. So as, as part of their their contract, uh, they've agreed to, to keep that more towards the north. So that's, that's kind of the main reason why they're, they're located where they're located at. So the parking, um, we also asked the applicant about that, um, particularly if it's going to affect the, the Taco Bell next door. And uh, from what the applicant explained is that um, Taco Bell doesn't actually lease uh, that parking lot. So um, there is some parking available further to the south. And since during the pandemic, uh, a lot of their business is primarily going to be drive through. Uh, we figured that 
that should be a solution that should work. Um, waste disposal, um, the applicants explain that their, all of their samples and equipment will, uh, once used, will be chemically sterilized and they're work, um, working and coordinating with Stericycle to, to make sure that they're following all the health codes and, and, and properly disposing of everything. So, and the last uh, uh, thing that we looked at was just kind of their sign placement up here on the corner. Um, we just need to make sure that that sign's uh, located out of the clear vision zone so that people can see as they're, as they're pulling in and out of there. So uh, we've added a condition of approval that uh, just requires them to set that back three feet from behind the sidewalk to, to keep it out of that area. So, um, so that's uh, pretty much the proposal in a nutshell and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Matt, it looks like Jeff Larson has um, joined. I, and I just saw that as well. Thank you, Julie. Um, any questions for, for Mark before we, or for, for Jeff, thank you for coming in and joining us, Mr. Larson. Yeah, thank you for having me. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late. You're okay, Mark did a good job. Um, questions, guys? Here, I just have a question about the flow of traffic and the parking issue. If I could uh, get the applicant to kind of explain their process and how many vehicles they can uh, get through there in what type of time. Yeah. I just know that dealing with some of the facilities that I've dealt with, you get a lot of vehicles for quite a long time yeah. stacked up there. Yeah, I'd be happy to speak to that. So first, we only do the saliva testing, which only takes, you know, two minutes or three minutes per car. So we don't see the, the backup that you see with some of the nasal swab testing. Um, this site in West Jordan tests between 150 to 200 people per day and uh, has never had a line that spills out uh, beyond the highlighted area you see on the map. Um, the way it works is the patient drives up and, you know, 80% of our patients have already pre-registered online, which makes the process very smooth. So they drive up uh, to these, to the uh, garden shed that we have set up there. You see on the map in the blue, the, the nurse greets the patient, um, collects a little bit of information from them, and then hands them a test kit through the window of their car. The patient then kind of does a U-turn, as you can kind of see on the map there, and um, parks in one of the parking stalls for about, you know, one minute if they're fast, three or four minutes if they're slow. And while they're parked, they're spitting saliva into their test tube. Um, again, their windows are completely rolled up. So there's, you know, no exposure, no, no, no danger there. And then, you know, as soon as they're done, they unroll their window, a nurse, approaches their vehicle, collects the saliva sample, um, puts it in a, in a sterile container, and then the patient just drives away. So the whole thing from start to beginning takes, you know, anywhere from three to five minutes, depending on how fast the patient is at spitting saliva into their test tube. Um, and, and, and like I said earlier, we, you know, we, we, we process 150 to 200 people per day at this site and have had no um, problems with long lines that I'm aware of. Uh, to date. Do you take appointments only or how does that work? So no appointment necessary. Um, it's it's 100% drive up. Uh, and yeah, we, we do see a little bit of a rush in the morning and we do see a little bit of a rush around about 4 p.m. And then during the day, it's usually pretty slow. And so it sounds like you're already doing this and we're kind of just getting this as a it's an approval measure behind the, after the fact. So you're, you've already seen these numbers and, and, and know that they're good. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's my apologies. I, I was unaware of the, of the need for a permit. Um, we, we have, we have 10 of these testing sites throughout Utah. And, you know, you guys know much, much more clearly than I do that different cities have different rules and so I apologize I was not aware of, of the rule with 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 this particular site and so we did open the site and uh, have had no no issues other than just 
you know, a polite police officer telling us that we need to get this permit. Okay. Well, how dare you want to help the the public? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, I think that helps us out. Any other questions, guys? If I can get unmuted here, um, just one quick question. So this is for a, a temporary use permit for 150 days. I understand yeah. you've really been working through this. Are you really going to be done by April? So it's it's 100 percent dependent on um, what happens with the virus and the vaccine. Um, we all hope that we'll be done by April. And uh, you know if 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 we can get this virus under control and the vaccine is you know widely distributed, um, then there will be no need for for COVID testing, and so we'll we'll close and and uh, and uh, move the testing site. If heaven forbid something terrible happens with the virus and you know the hospitals get backed up again we may need to extend beyond the 150 days but we're hoping at that time we can you know maybe apply for an extension or a different permit or even move the site um to somewhere else in west jordan if if that's what it takes so we're, we're just kind of watching the virus to see how long we'll be um, operating this facility I have a question. Do you plan on just doing the testing or do you plan to eventually also start giving the vaccine as well? This would probably determine if yes, it's so that's, longer. That's a really great question. And uh, you're, you're highlighting a, a very you know, strategic um, complication for, for our company, for our business, which is what do we do post COVID? I would love to um, start distributing the vaccine, but in order to distribute the vaccine, we'd have to like 100% pivot our business model. We'd have to hire different employees. We'd, we'd have to buy new equipment. Um, I don't know if we could even store vaccines in a garden shed the way that we do with these test kits. And so, we're, we're, we're entertaining the idea of distributing the vaccine and we're, you know, very interested in that long term, but it's not um, something set in stone right now. I can't confidently tell you that we're going to distribute the vaccine at this site in West Jordan. Uh, it's just, it's just too far away. Um, it is on our radar, but, but it's just not, it's not a, a firm thing that I can commit to right now. I've got another question for the applicant. Mm -hmm. um, so could you tell us some real numbers on what you're doing as far as testing goes right now? How many, yeah. how many are you testing per day? Uh, your letter says that you are anticipating between 100 and 200 tests a day, is that? Yep, yeah, so at this location, uh, we've been testing people for a few weeks and we've been consistently doing between 100 and 200 people per day. Okay. Um, I can give you the exact number from today if you'd like. Sure, that'd be great. Um, I'm going to just look on my phone. I hope I don't get disconnected here. Let's see, give me one second. So in West Jordan today, we saw 144 patients. Okay. So I did a little math. You said three to five minutes. Mm -hmm. So worst, worst case scenario on stacking, um, if you had 200 customers in a day, and if it was a worst case scenario, five minutes per test, mm -hmm. Uh, you've got about 16 and a half hours worth of work. Yeah. I'm a little worried about the stacking still. Yeah. It dissuades my fears there. I know that's yeah. the worst case scenario, but um, if- Yes. If, I think I think that's that's uh, no a great thing to point out. Uh, I think you're assuming though that we're testing one person at a time, one after another. And the great thing about the saliva test is that we can test you know 15 or 20 people in parallel. Um, which is what we do. So 
in West Jordan, we have six um, employees. We have one site manager and five testing technicians. And, you know, each employee, so the, the site manager is inside the garden shed behind a computer, but the other five employees are out um, assisting patients. And, you know, each employee, let's say, can handle four or five patients in parallel. Okay, that's where, um, I, that's where I get lost. Yeah, so you can, so we, we do process people in parallel, so, so we can get people through fairly quickly. Okay, that, that helps me. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes if, if there is a line, a uh, testing technician will kind of run down the line and get people their tests. So while they're even, you know, waiting to get up to the shed to check in, they're already starting their spitting into their um, test tubes. All right, guys, any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Larson. Thank you all for having me. Really appreciate the yeah. time today. There's no more questions. We could entertain an action here. Chair, I'll go ahead and make a motion. Please. First off, I think it's a good idea that we get some more testing locations. I think the more testing, the better. Um, that's I'm all for that. Um, anyway, based on the information and findings set forth in the staff report and upon the evidence and explanations received today, I move the Planning Commission approve the temporary use permit for Premier Diagnostics located at 1627 West, 9000 South in a PC zone with the conditions and approval listed on page two of the report. I'll second that. Thank you. We have a motion by Commissioner Thomas, seconded by Commissioner Bloom. Any discussion to the motion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Perfect. Thank you for your time this evening, Mr. Larson. We appreciate what you're doing to try to help out West Jordan. Thank you all so very much. Appreciate the time. Have a good evening. Right. Um, all right, moving along. Um, before we do this, can we just quickly do a motion to move past four and five and then we'll come back to this one really quick? Yeah, do we want those separate? Each nope, individual? you can do them together. Okay, I move that we uh, continue the text amendment mining extraction overlay hearing as well as the text amendment PCFB zone, both to be continued until 1215 of 20 meetings. Second. Motion by Commissioner England, seconded by Commissioner Allen. Any discussion to the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that brings us to our, our uh, first and final public hearing for the evening. This is for Banfield Pet Hospital at 1607 West 7000 South. A conditional use permit for a veterinary service in an SC2 zone. Scott Edwards um, Architecture. Jeff Hammond is the applicant. I think I saw you on here. So Mr. Hammond, the floor is now yours, sir. Okay, great. Can you hear me? We can. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, I appreciate uh, everyone making the time out of your evening for this. Um, my name is Jeff Hammond, as was stated. I'm the architect for Banfield Pet Hospital. Uh, since 1955, Banfield's been providing high-quality neighborhood veterinary care throughout the United States with approximately 950 facilities nationwide. Um, dozens in this local market, including Salt Lake, Sandy, Orem, and also here in West Jordan. Um, our veterinary care model is to provide small neighborhood clinics within existing shopping centers, providing high quality services for household pets at a close and convenient location. Located within this Park Village Plaza shopping center, Banfield will reduce transportation time for clients and provide a location to receive necessary veterinary care at a convenient one-stop shopping center location. As mentioned in our application at Banfield, we do not provide overnight boarding. We don't provide outdoor facilities or long-term care for animals. Um, with this said, we routinely partner with other 24-hour emergency hospitals in the area and would refer patients needing overnight care or extended care to those uh, facilities. 
We're a neighborhood clinic and not a, a hospital. At a Banfield clinic typically is in the 3,500 to 4,500 square foot um, size and sees roughly 20 pets per day. Um, during peak times, we could expect approximately five clients and four to seven staff uh, within the premises. And due to the nature of our business, clients are typically parked from 15 to 30 minutes for either pickup or drop off of their pet. Banfield prides itself on being good neighbors and tenants and with no overnight care or outdoor facilities, our impact on adjacent tenants and neighboring properties is minimal with little or no impact on the public peace, safety or welfare. With this said, Banfield is committed to being a good neighbor and working closely with the community and the city jurisdiction to alleviate any potential concerns. And I'll open up the floor for any questions or clarifications as needed. Perfect, thank you. Any questions for the applicant? I've got one. one. Uh, I think I heard Shelton and then we'll go with England. Yeah, uh, my question is, do you have any locations for owners to potty their pets outside before they bring them in or after they take them out? Yeah, we don't provide a specific location for that, but we do provide pet waste stations. You've probably seen those around. They usually have a little dispenser for bags and a trash disposal. We, we typically do provide that and our staff, you know, several times a day monitors that, monitors the immediate property right around our, our location. Um, but we try not to provide a, you know, a formal facility for that. But in the event an animal has a, you know, relieves itself on the way to or just leaving the facility, yes, there is a means there for picking that up. Commissioner England. Uh, just one question. We're not gonna pass the pets through the drive-through, are we? <laughs> no, no. If they had one of those, maybe uh, those little shoot, where you could shoot the tube through maybe, but uh, yeah, for the most part, no, the drive-through is closed. Uh, ATM is gone and uh, awesome. Thank you. You bet. I've sent some crazy stuff through those tubes before as a banker, but I've never seen a pet. So. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Probably, <laughs> probably would not be good. I, I would like to just add I'm a, a, I go to Mid Valley Animal Clinic and the wait there is hours. So I'm thrilled to see another pet facility close in West Jordan that um, I can take my pups to. So thank you. Great, great to yep, hear. I agree. West Jordan desperately needs more. <laughs> she says as she strokes her her uh, cat. I, I, funny uh, how she came <laughs> right when it started. <laughs> yeah, she knew we were going to talk about her tonight. So. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay, thank you for your time. We will reserve you a little bit of time after the public hearing if there's any other questions that we might need answered. I just want to Great. hang out. Right. Mr. Good. Forsyth, it's all yours again. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so a little bit of context of where this is, you can kind of see on the map here, but this will be just located on 7,800 South, just east of Redwood Road, in the old Key Bank building. So some of the surrounding uses uh, to the north, you've got the Embark apartment complex. To the south is uh, Smith's grocery store. Uh, to the east is uh, Southwest Family Medicine, uh, which is a medical clinic. And then just to the west is that, uh, the rest of that Park Village Plaza shopping center. So, so it gives you kind of a little bit of context of what's around there. and. Um, so this is going to be located in an SC2 zone, which is uh, the city's community commercial zone that uh, accommodates a variety of low impact commercial businesses like retail restaurants and, and other services. And so a vet clinic, um, it's, it's kind of in the realm of that. It's not too impactful, yet it's not a residential use. So it's, uh, we feel that it's a good fit for this zone. And, uh, should fit well in that area. So this is uh, just a floor plan that they've submitted. So as you can kind of see, they're going to be making a lot of changes to uh, the interior, pretty much uh, 
a complete renovation in there. Um, but if we go to the site plan, uh, they're actually not proposing any changes whatsoever to, to the exterior. So uh, the only minor change that we they would be making as the applicant mentioned was getting rid of the ATM and just kind of filling in that in the wall space there. Uh, the drive-through and the awning will uh, still remain there. They're not going to be making any changes to that, but uh, but that's not going to be used. They're not going to be, uh, <laughs> as he said, not using it for pet drop-off or, or anything like that. It's just going to remain as is and com completely unused. So. Oops. So uh, some of the um, things that we looked at in terms of impacts were, um, uh, first of all, kenneling. Um, the applicants made it very clear in their letter and in their description tonight that they're not going to be doing any boarding or pet daycare, uh, which is good because uh, we don't allow that uh, kind of use in the SC2 zone. So, um, so we've uh, kind of further enforced that by the conditions of approval and um, uh, we don't think that's really going to be an issue here. Um, as far as waste disposal goes, um, we're mostly looking at biological waste and things like that. And so um, uh, from what it appears in their floor plan and uh, what they've uh, explained in the their letter of intent, it doesn't look like they're gonna have any cremation or, or anything like that. Um, all their biological waste is uh, either disposed of properly or uh, frozen until it can be taken off site to be properly disposed of. So um, again, we've addressed that uh, in the conditions of approval to make sure that they're complying with all health codes and, and things of that nature. So, uh, and then the last thing we looked at was uh, the noise. Um, judging by the location, and I'll kind of go back to the aerial map here, but uh, uh, there's really not a whole lot of residential anywhere close by that we, we think is going to be affected. Uh, most of it's on the other side of 7,000 South. Um, in fact, the nearest residential dwelling is 180 feet away on the opposite side of that road. So uh, we don't think that's gonna be much of a problem. Uh, the, the nearest building would be the, um, the Southwest Family Medicine, uh, but everything along that wall, um, their existing windows are either gonna be filled in or uh, the windows that do remain are going to be uh, covered with storage units that are pretty much the full height of the ceiling. So, so that's we feel that's going to block a lot of the noise, if if any. So, so based on uh, these findings and uh, the findings in the staff report, staff's recommending approval of the conditional use permit. Thank you. Any questions for staff? I actually have another question for the applicant. If if uh, I could be permitted. Sure, go ahead. Um, just kind of, I'd like to ask about boarding. You said there's no overnight boarding. Um, if you were to say you have, spay a dog and there's complications with the surgery and the dog needs to be kept for observation or kept overnight, uh, you wouldn't do that. How would you handle that type of situation? Yeah, if it needs if it needs overnight care, we work with a, a local twenty four hour emergency hospital and transfer that patient. So you would uh, transfer the animal, right? But if you bring in if you bring in your pet in the morning and you're doing a teeth cleaning or something like that, and you get off at two in the afternoon and want to pick your pet up a couple hours later, yes, that pet may stay on the premises for a couple hours during the middle of the day. But all serious, you know, I guess critical care, I guess I would call that would be handled by a, a, a third party clinic or something. A, a slight bit of history, Banfield is owned by a very large pet care group. It's the Mars Corporation and they have a pet, pet division. And in that corporation, Banfield is the like daily clinic. And then there's Blue Pearl, which is a 24 hour hospital piece of it. And then they also own VCA, which is Veterinary Clinics of America, which is the second biggest veterinary group in the world, they 
some of those facilities are 24 hours as well. So they have a lot of connections in the community already that they can easily uh, transfer. So you're talking about that blue pearl that's just down the street there in Midvale? Yeah, they're owned by this. The same mothership owns both of them. They're awesome. They're separate companies, but owned by the same larger company. Well, they did, did a good job with my dog last year when he needed some help. So uh, many other questions for staff. All right, uh, this is our loan public hearing for the evening. So uh, we will go ahead and open this up for the public. This is your time to go ahead and speak. Um, just as a couple of housekeeping things, if there is anybody who's going to do that. Um, if you are watching online via Zoom, then all you need to do is just hold down your space bar that will unmute you so that you can speak. Um, there's a little, the little three dots at the bottom that allows you to click on the raise your hand. If you're calling in by phone, please dial star nine. That will allow you to raise your hand and then star six will let you unmute when it is your time. Time is now yours. Seeing as we know who everybody is on the call and nobody's raising their hand, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing for this item, bring this back to the Planning Commission for, for their discussion or action. Chair, I'd like to make a motion. Please do. Based on the information and findings set forth in the staff report and upon the evidence and explanations received today, I move that the Planning Commission approve the conditional use permit for Banfield Pet Hospital located at 1607 West, 7000 South in an SC-2 zone with the conditions of approval listed on page two of this report. I'll second that. Uh, is that you, Jay? Okay. Yes. Uh, you, you, you and Corbin both popped up on my screen at the same time. We have a motion by Commissioner Shelton, seconded by Commissioner Thomas. Any discussion to the motion? All right, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we are unanimous. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hammond. As someone who uh, lives close by to this area, I'm glad to see anything that's gonna improve the area as well as provide services for the, the uh, residents in the neighborhood. So thank you for your desire to do business here in West Jordan. We appreciate you. Great, and thank you everyone for your time tonight. Yep, have a good night. Um, unless there is Anything else tonight from staff or the commission, um, we are uh, ready to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay, make sure you're on time next time. We've got, uh, looks like we'll have several items, plus we have some training. So be prepared, guys. Thank you. Yep, we'll see you. Have a good time. Have a good night. You guys are great.